Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode on the Sports Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Sage McSwain, and for this episode, we're going to be going over Michael Jordan's flu game and the conspiracy around it. Now, there have already been a lot of videos regarding his flu game. Was it really a flu, you know, hangover? That's what a lot of people do say. Um, but I'm going to be going over this game and um, seeing if it was really the flu or if it was a hangover or a new theory while I was doing my research. Is it possibly food poisoning um, or even a combination of both a hangover and food poisoning? But we'll go ahead and see what, you know, what the facts are and uh, the conspiracies and see if we can come to a conclusion on if Michael Jordan's flu game was really a flu game. Now, first starting off when the flu game was. So now the flu game was in on June 11th, 1997 against the Utah Jazz in the NBA Finals. Uh, now this was in game five. Um, and I believe this was a two, no, two, two series. Yes, two, two series. Cause the Bulls did end up winning this game 90 to 88. So now, you know, getting to game seven or game six. Um, but Michael Jordan played really good that game. He had 38 points, seven rebounds, five assists, and three steals. And that kind of leads to, I guess, the legendary lore of the flu game. I mean, he had the flu. Sure, he played in the game with the flu. But not only did he play in poor condition, but he actually was dropping points. He almost dropped a 40 piece while being sick. So that kind of adds on to the, I guess, the legacy of the game. Um, but, you know, obviously the lack of social media in the late 90s kind of led to the news really giving out facts. So um, previous to the, to the actual game, that is when the... Uh, announcers have said that he had the flu and he was still going to be playing in the game. Now, obviously, the first, you know, kind of question mark that I had was if he did have the flu, why would why would you put your players at risk? Okay, if you're the Bulls organization, okay, you're in the finals. I get it, and it's tied two two. Do you do you risk giving up a game? without having Michael Jordan in, or do you risk the health of your entire team? And as for this, they risk the entire health of the team and the opposing team. Now, um, since the flu is contagious, obviously, you know, it's going to get other people sick. But another reason why I did look at this kind of suspicious is that nobody else on the Bulls organization got the flu from being with Michael Jordan uh, because game six was the very next day on June 12th, which I'll get into later. But nobody, nobody had the flu. Michael Jordan himself didn't even have the flu. And again, I'll go ahead and talk about that. And then nobody on the Jazz had the flu. So the people playing against Michael Jordan didn't have the flu. Nobody on the Bulls had uh, had the flu. And also the very next day, Michael Jordan didn't have the flu. So it doesn't really make much sense that he would have the flu. Maybe, you know, they're just a little bit stronger. Their immune systems are stronger back then. And all of a sudden, you know, it wasn't really contagious apparently uh but that's kind of what the flu game is he was sick still scored a lot of points and was able to get the win uh in game five of the finals now as for it being a hangover you know michael jordan known for partying out you know in during his career um before games you know like i said in the um in the retirement or suspension video for michael jordan's career um, he, he was a known gambler, he had a known gambling addiction, um, but, you know, he, he was partying before games as well, he was drinking a little bit, now, could have been a hangover, maybe, I don't really know if the symptoms of a hangover really matched with what Michael Jordan was feeling, um, and there was already kind of an alibi there, um, Michael Jordan's trainer, said that you know they were all in the hotel with the team and it was, it was late and they wanted to get pizza they got pizza and they and Michael Jordan is eating it and things like that so I'm not sure if you could drink that much around a team maybe you know we, I can also talk about that later in the video but it was it's an interesting thing I think hangover was one of the main popular theories that came out but 
I think my next my next theory I think is a lot more believable than him being hungover. Now, as for the theory of food poisoning, now this one I think is more logical than the hangover theory, mainly because you could get still you know you could still get sick from food poisoning and still feel like you know complete trash with food poisoning and kind of have the same symptoms. Um, now. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, Michael Jordan's trainer, he, so he retold the story on the podcast and also I believe it was kind of alluded to in the, uh, Last Dance documentary that in that final series against the Utah Jazz, they were staying in a hotel and a lot of people knew where they were staying at because, you know, it, it's, it's not that popular and, uh, I mean, Utah's not really that popular and I guess also there weren't that many hotels in the area around that time. So everybody kind of knew where they were staying. Um, and they ended up, you know, hungry. The team was, the entire team was hungry. Um, and, you know, they, they couldn't find a restaurant that was still open this late at night, but they found a pizza place that was. So they ordered a pizza. They ordered it to the hotel. Again, everybody knew where they were staying, so it is possible that the Utah residents were like, you know, let's poison the pizza a little bit, you know, you can play bad against the Jazz, and then the Jazz can win the finals, you know, a little slight. So they they may have poisoned the pizza, right? They delivered it to them, and MJ's trainer um, retells that there were five guys that came to the door and ordered the pizza, or like gave them the pizza. You know, I don't think you need five people to give somebody a pizza, but they gave five, you know, it took five guys to give him a pizza. So that was already kind of a red flag there. Uh, MJ's trainer said that he didn't really feel too good about the pizza. So, you know, he let everybody know that he didn't really, he didn't feel the best about eating the pizza. So he didn't eat the pizza. He says that not, not the entire team really ate the pizza, but he does know that MJ did eat the pizza. Michael Jordan did eat the pizza. So, um, they're eating it and, you know, Everything's fine. Probably woke up the next day like, ooh, yeah, pizza wasn't really that good. Probably got him the food poisoning. 100% it was food poisoning. 100, 100%. You know, but obviously it just sounds better to be the flu game than a food poisoning game. That just doesn't even, that doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even roll off your tongue correctly. So we were, we were in, U, we were in Utah. And uh, back then, uh, the team decided to stay in Park City. Park City was not what Park City is now, all right? So literally everything closed down at like 8.30. There was no there was no uh, room service in the hotel. And Michael said, hey, he's hungry. And I'm like, all right, listen, everything is everything is closed. And then I was finally able to find, hey, Michael, I found a pizza joint that's open. So I said, order me, order the pizza. So I ordered the pizza and then the door, the door rang. And by then everybody knew what room Michael's was in because yeah, and we had already been there for we had already been there for a while and I open up the door and there's literally five guys standing out there to deliver a pizza all right so I take the pizza obviously they wanted to get a glimpse of Michael and you know I handed the pizza I paid the guys and I closed the door and I just said man I got a bad feeling about this and I got a bad feeling about this so I he goes hey is this a pizza I said yeah here's a pizza I told Michael I said I got a bad feeling about this he was like oh man fuck you I was like okay <laughs> So nobody, there was, there was about four of us in the room. Nobody ate the pizza but him, nobody. And there was no signs of flu, anything being sick before that. And then about three o'clock in the morning, we get, I get a call to my room and just say, hey man, come to MJ's room. And he's literally curled up in a fetal position. Just like, I'm like, oh man, what happened? So we went and got the team physician at that time. And, and just nobody. The theory comes in though, which has some scientific proof okay now with food poisoning the symptoms can last 30 minutes to eight days okay and as i said before while i was doing my research i was trying to see if michael jordan was still sick game six of the of the 1997 finals since it was the next day you know they were playing back-to-back days for the finals so was he sick I didn't see anything about him saying that he was still sick and he looked perfectly fine. Um, and, I mean, he basically had the same stat line that he did in Game 5. I mean, he had... How many, 
How many points? I remember wrote it, wrote it down here in my notes here. Wait, let me just one moment. Oh, I can't see it. But anyway, while I try to find it, I'll keep on talking. But I think overall, I mean, he did good. I think this was the game where the shot was actually taken, uh, the game winner for the final. So obviously, Michael Jordan was just, he he was doing good. He was doing good. So was it really that bad? I don't think so. And the symptoms of the flu can last three to seven days. So he was perfectly fine in game six. And if the flu, the, the, he's, there's no way he's getting rid of the flu in one day. So food poisoning could be pretty logical. Now, uh, as for a theory that does also have food poisoning is the Jalen Rose conspiracy. Now, this is only because he was he was in a podcast that he's featured in, and Jalen Rose is everybody's favorite NBA whistleblower. Am I right? So uh, he was featured in a podcast, and they kind of asked him about the flu game and if he thought it was a flu game. And you know, Jalen Rose came with an analogy, and he said that if you go to your favorite restaurant and then you order, a, I think he said like a cheeseburger, and you got the combo right, and then he basically says that's all he's gonna say. Now, I think he's alluding to possibly a combo, a combination between being hungover and food poisoning, which caused the flu game. And that could make more sense because you can't be hungover for, I mean, I don't really know, but it doesn't seem like you can be really hungover for two straight days and then also have food poisoning for two straight days. I mean, you can, but again, the symptoms only last, I mean, at minimum 30 minutes and uh, can go up to eight days, but he was perfectly fine the next day. So, you know, maybe it was a, a short term, you know, food poisoning and, and he was just hungover for that day, which is perfectly understandable. And he could have the flu and it's interesting, but, uh, I, I don't know if Jalen Rose is the most reliable person out there. And I don't even know if half of the theories that I sell on this channel are reliable. So, uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And I'm definitely not degrading what he did um, in in that game or belittling his stats. I mean, he did amazing that game uh, with the flu. If he if he if he did have the flu, he still did amazing that game. Um, and the, just to see the condition that he was in the entire game, uh, he just did not look good at all. And he he played probably one of the best games I've seen anybody play. Um, and probably a lot of guys probably would have just sat up the game. Uh, in the finals, but he, he instead wanted to play, and he played his heart out, um, and he played really well, uh, just some questionable things, but, you know, obviously, um, I don't think Michael Jordan's ever gonna, ever gonna say that he didn't have the flu, so, uh, just kind of like how he said that, he, he's never gonna say that he got suspended for gambling or anything, so, really, uh, it's just interesting, good good other theory to think about in the nba um and overall i think this is a really good theory uh just it's just interesting to see like what other people's theories are for such an incredible feat um kind of making these myths about what really happened um it's just interesting um to me and more about you know more sports theories and things like that have really been interesting so Overall, I think it was just a really great conspiracy theory, and, um, you know, you can just let me down in the comments know if he had the flu or not. And so that'll be all for today's episode. Again, just leave a comment down below if you guys think he had the flu, if you guys think he had food poisoning, or a combination of being hangover and food poisoning, or was he just hungover, or, you know, another, another little thing that you think, maybe. Um, but, yeah, since that is it, Make sure, you're, while you're down there, leave in a comment. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And maybe hit that notification bell if you really want to uh, know when I up, uh, upload another video. Um, and if you are listening to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give the podcast a follow. And if you're over there already, please give it a five-star review. That would be really meaningful to me, so thank you if you do that. Um, but other than that... I just want to thank you for watching or listening all the way through, and have a great rest of your day.